cat calls are actually scaring me. Because if you thought that, you know, I would tell you a story about a bear that was rescued by Karthik and uh, how Mr. Ganeshriya identified as an incarnation of Jamwant from a man. And uh, Vishal actually, you know, trained him and, you know, reinstated his dignity and belief. And uh, he went on to, you know, become a real graphic designer in Adobe and fell in love with a koala who actually stranded into Indian border because the glaciers were melting. And it actually gave rise to tensions between India and China. No, I'm not going to tell you that story. But that story... That story has already been told. Well, the idea is not to mock uh, the speakers. The idea is to, of course, entertain you. Uh, but unfortunately, perhaps, I don't know if I would be entertaining for the rest of my talk. Uh, because I intend to talk about uh, why media actually falls into the trap of sensationalizing news. Uh, before that, I'm really happy, I'm honored to be here among this set of distinguished uh, speakers. Well, uh, when I first got invite from uh, Aniket, I thought it was a fake invite. Uh, you can't blame me for that. I, uh, I actually, you know, thought somebody is playing a uh, reverse uh, book with me. And it didn't uh, take me much to realize that it, it was actually a real event at a real campus called uh, Bits Pilani, and I was really happy. Thanks for that. Uh, but I thought, what I have I done to, to, in, to be invited to an independent TED event? TED is all about ideas worth spreading, and I am spreading humor. Uh, there are tens of thousands of people in the United States, Australia, in the European countries, who actually believe that there is a man in India, a 26-year-old man in India, who sued a deodorant company because he couldn't attract a girl. But this is my contribution to the society. <laughs> I, was, I was really ashamed. I, I was suicidal. Uh, but then I thought, okay, self-gratification. I thought, no. You know, I'm, uh, I'm doing some service to the society. You know, I'm, I'm letting you know how an urban legend is born. I'm letting you know how media sometimes falters to respect its, you know, identity as a, uh, as, as a responsibility of being the gatekeeper of, uh, uh, you know, of uh, acts that, that should come to you. Anyway, you know, I want to tell you that I want to tell you why it's happening, why the lines between faking news and breaking news is blurry. Take a look. This makes breaking news. You know, I don't know if actually, you know, it, uh, I, I can do better, I think. There is a cat that makes breaking news these days, and it, it makes the news on one channel, but the other channel also tries to catch up, that okay, this is a breaking news. And when the cat is there, why should the dog be behind? So the dog is also there. He's also a part of breaking news. Oh, bull. No. When, when somebody is saving bear, there are some guys saving bulls. You know, it's quite interesting how the media is behaving. And I ask, dude, where is the news? Now, if you ask this question, uh, these are the three kind of, you know, responses that you normally get. Uh, somebody will say that, okay, it's sad, television journalism is evolving, you know, it's, it's a young industry, it seems to improve. Somebody says that, okay, Journalism has changed. Uh, it's the demand of people. They want to, you know, read such kind of news. They want such kind of stuff. Only. And, uh, you know, third kind of people would say, come on, who are you to question us? We show it because you, you watch it, because you enjoy it. We, we are actually selling, uh, selling content that sells. Now, let's, let's try to analyze these questions. You know, what, what, what is actually journalism? how it started. I'm not going to bore you much with history, uh, but it started, you know, in the 15th century, uh, with, you know, with, when the press, uh, Gutenberg press came and, you know, they uh, started publishing Bibles and distributing them and they released it from the clutches of the clergy. You know, by, it, for, it took another 200 years, that, that's when printing press came in and it took another 200 years when daily newspapers came in. Uh, you know, so, it started as a business, a printing business of selling ideas that the Bible should not be in the hand of clergy only. And it, these daily newspapers were most, mostly anti-royalist. They were not, uh, 
you know, they, they were printing things about democracy, about civil rights. So it was all business of selling ideals about, about democracy, about, uh, you know, basic rights. Even Mahatma Gandhi started as a journalist. And he was thrown out of uh, uh, that cabin in South Africa. The first thing that he did was to start a journal called Indian Opinion. This is how journalism started. This is how we understand journalism to be. Now what happened? What, what went wrong? You know, by late 19th century, people thought that, okay, these newspapers are reaching millions of homes. They are really one of the best platforms to advertise. That gave rise to yellow journalism. Now, that was also the time, this late 19th century and 20th century, when television and cinema was and you know, society was discovering new heroes, new celebrities that we just discovered sometimes earlier. Now, journalism was slowly turning into a business of selling advertising spots. So, you know, as is there no market to, uh, where ideals and ideas are bought and sold? Look at these things. Okay, I, I give you uh, Take, take this example. I come to you. I have two CDs in my hand. You have 25 rupees or 50 rupees, whatever. And there is one CD which has a half an hour special analysis of how Rakhi Saman's member was different from Rahul Mahajan's member. And there is another CD that talks about, say, rural innovation. And I tell you to, you know, buy one of the CDs. It's this CD you will buy. Okay, somebody will answer. <laughs> Really? Well, I, I I want that you know somebody could take take this as uh, you know a market research experiment. Somebody could actually try to find out who will buy, uh, you know, what are the kind of CDs that will uh, among these two that will sell most. My gut feeling says that when you have to buy something, when you have to shell out the money, shell out some money, you won't buy anything that is trash. Uh, and. That's, that's why, you know, when, when people say that such news sells, I disagree with them. You know, if I start, when you say there is a demand for such news, what is demand? Demand is when you feel need, and that need is backed by, you know, your willingness to pay someone. If I start distributing free chocolates, most of you will take. I, I can't say that there is a demand for chocolates in Mitspilani. I'm, 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 I'm you know, giving it free to you. And most of these channels who are who show you trash and who claim that this is the demand, they are free to air, you, you watch it, you consume the content for entertainment, you don't consume it or you, you really won't buy the, that content. So I, I disagree when somebody says that this is the demand, this is what sells. Okay. Now, you know, people say that, well, if, if this, is, this is not selling, why are they getting high TRPs? High TRPs means more and more people are watching it. Why? Okay, let's take another example. You go into a multiplex, okay, you see that girl. I think most of you are looking at that girl only. And, uh, you know, the girl has attracted eyeballs. You know, TRP of that girl is high. Now, she comes to you and sort you a business card that, okay, this, this has a URL of a website that uh, some of my friends have launched. Maybe you could check it out. I bet most of you would come back to your hostel rooms and check out that website. You know, now there is another that fat guy. I couldn't uh, find a, a funnier photo, but you know, maybe some little guy who really find quite in, uh, you know very funny. He also, he will also attract your attention. You know, both of these pictures will attract same kind of eyeballs. But if he gives you uh, you know a say business card and says that okay, check out this website, maybe you will, you just throw away the card when he goes away. And what I want to tell you is that when, if, if something is attracting eyeball, it, it doesn't really mean that it, it influences you. And this is my message to the advertisers. You know that an ad, something, if you might attract eyeballs, but are you, are the advertising actually being effective? You might, uh, you know, think that uh, this is the television that has the highest TRPs, is, is that advertising actually effective? People might watch that advertisement. Is it affecting them? You know, you, you say the why, why, who, who am I to tell that? You know, that you might not agree with that analogy of a, you know, fat guy and, 
you know, a cute little girl. But by the way, uh, uh, you know, I must tell you that don't go looking out for that girl in some multiplex. I simply googled uh, image and she is a Pakistani actually. So, you know, you might uh, land into some trouble. So, fine. You know, you might say that, okay, on what basis is that analog analogy actually rational? On what basis do I say? Now, this is a research that was published uh, by, you know, two professors. One is a professor of journalism in Northwestern University, and another is a professor of management in Kellogg Institute of Management. And they found out very interestingly that the ads that appear in a newspaper which people consider as serious, as making them smarter, those ads have got more effect. They are more effective than publishing ads in newspapers that are actually considered non serious. Now, these advertisers would say that, okay, these are only research. Uh, you know, do they actually hold ground in real, real world? You know, they, they would otherwise believe all kind of trash reports. They, you know, there would be a report that says that, okay, when people grow old, they start, uh, you know, feeling this way or that way. All kind of reports would be published in media. All kind of reports would be believed in this, uh, in this world. But they would fail to, they would ignore such a report. Why? Because, you know, we haven't really developed the metrics. How, how do we find that which are the newspapers or which are the platforms that actually make you smart? Which are the uh, newspapers that make you dumb? How do, we, how do we find it out? There is no metrics to find it out. And that's why I, you know, I want to throw this idea uh, that apart from TRP, there should be something like PRP act also, perception rating. You know, you know that this television is watched by so many people. But how is that television being just? How is that television being perceived by people? If, you know, if somebody or someone of you could actually start a website where people could rank all these media channels, media platforms, on, on uh, parameters like credibility, neutrality, on seriousness, on whether they actually show you with uh, ridiculous facts or they come up with some analysis. You know, if, if there could be uh, IMDB for movies, why couldn't be there a database or a public rating platform or newspapers for these news channels? Once such a metric comes up and, and it becomes so popular that people are not able to ignore it, I'm pretty sure that something or the other, this, this whole mess will improve. Now you might say that, okay, am I not, uh, you know, uh, uh, eating an uh, axe on my own feet? I mean, uh, okay, I, I come up with trash news. And uh, when I say that, okay, I, you know, uh, there should be some metrics, uh, where, where does fake news fall into that? Now, you know, I'm not really a newspaper, not really a uh, news channel. And that's, that's why uh, this is also another important aspect. That there are these channels who claim themselves to be news channels. Perhaps they should come out clean and they should tell that they are tabloids. You know, let, let, let them not unfairly compete with somebody who is interested in serious journalism. You, have, you, had, you, you used to have general uh, entertainment channels. Now, they have been broken down. They, you have movies channel, you have music channels, you have reality channels, and, and so many diversifications, no, so many of differentiation has happened. But it hasn't happened in news. Even though journalism as an industry has grown, we, we are still seeing a very non-serious channel calling itself a news channel and trying to compete, trying to uh, dump down some other channel which, which is actually interested in uh, doing some serious journalism. This, this, you know, these, these are the things that, that, uh, that have always worried me. And as a reaction to that, of course, I had started faking news. And I don't know how, uh, you know, if I have made a point over here, I would really want such a metric to come up. My whole idea was uh, that if faking news becomes that popular, maybe I could come up with such a platform where people could, you know, can rate it, uh, newspapers, news channels, and faking news is only done with honesty. Faking news is not done under the garb of breaking news. That's, that's, my, that's an idea that I wanted to share with you. I don't know I would have disappointed you or what, but this is what I wanted.